Okay, uh, you join me with yet another low carb review. Um, I'd like, well, I'll take this time and actually telling you the running videos may be done at different times compared to the actual reviewing of the loco. So if you see like different, you know, different style light levels, that's the reason behind it because I filmed it on different times. Um, this is a uh, a basic offering this goes into the realms of what Hornby are producing is their railroad so it's a basic model really um, there's a number of reasons why I picked this It's basically to show you guys and also to um, uh, I'm gonna try and get my words out also to tell you that you could probably you know pick this model up for quite cheap and also do some weathering practice weathering on it or if you want to you're not too sure about the hobby you could uh, purchase this uh, loco and uh, use it as a starter loco it's basically what it is is a starter model so you could um, get into the hobby so you know you're fresh into the hobby and you just want to get started you don't want to spend too much money this is the model for you guys I mean yeah it's a, it's a pretty good model um, also you got the other people where you can purchase model and you w might want to uh, detail it yourself you might want to alter things on it and add things and improve things there's all sorts of things that you can do with the railroad range I mean also uh, well you could uh, introduce it to the younger generation because basically they're quite robust and they're quite easy to use you know there's only four wheels on this model so there's no four row me chatting on chatting again uh yeah i highly recommend the railroad range i mean i purchased this at model zone but obviously well model zone aren't there anymore but i would like to say that they are because if you go into certain uh certain wh smith outlets you will find model zone so yes that is great news <laughs> I do miss models though. Yeah, I know they're they're quite pricey, but still, they 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 they're a pretty good shop. All right, this brings on to me to say that this is reference number R three zero six five, and it's a BR class O six diesel shunter, and its the running number is O six zero zero eight. Now, these locos. I know they look quite basic, but yes, they did exist. I thought it was just like a mock-up. But no, these models actually, the actual prototype of this model actually exists. And not just saying that as well, um, before I go into it, I do have a 1980s version of this uh, 06, which is in bits at the moment because I'm repairing it. It's got a lot of work going into it, but... I will have her running, but for now, let's. So I do own two of these, by the way. So <laughs> I've got a, an old, and one made in England and one made in China. So let's take this out from the box. And let's have a look at the instructions. Okay, this is the locomotive operating and maintenance for an Ofero locomotive H with a HP motor. Like, we're all familiar with these. I've got quite a few of these now. I mean, I've only just started going in to video in some of my uh, models. And I know I do have quite a lot of basic stuff as well. Well, I've got more, how could you put it, well, more of the professional stuff, should we say. But I also have a, a number of the... Uh, basic the O4Os and the reason for, for that is the collector's club is one reason and the second reason is basically I want to purchase a cheap model where I can practice weathering that's what I want to get into so yes that's the reason behind it I move the camera up slightly okay let's uh, open up and see what we get basically it's the, it's the usual how to gain access to the motor Okay, there's a number of different style models that you got here. Uh, there's a saddle tank there. 
Uh, there's the diesel shunter that we're looking at, which is down there. And basically, if we look over here, how to remove the motor, it's basically a simple clip which is really easy to remove. Oh yes, and by the way, I will be DCCing one of these. It is possible, you can do it, and I will show you how in a due course video. I've got loads of videos to do. <laughs> yeah, television suppressor, get rid of that. You don't need it if you're running DCC. Well, you don't really need it in DC mode, to be honest. Not a lot of stuff suffers from interference anymore. Yep, lubrication. So all those parts where marked oil, that's where you lubricate. And I must really stress, only a tiny, small amount. I mean, you do not want to over-oil these, because once the oil gets everywhere, it spreads everywhere. It's a pain to clean as well. I mean, I've done so many models where it's caked in oil, not just from people, or from manufacturers. I mean, I seem to find Backman over oil their locomotives a lot. I don't know if you guys find that, but I have recently. Back when seem to over oil a lot, which is annoying. I always give it a clean before I before I put it on the track, before it spreads. Instructions up there. Um, track cleaning was basically what I was going on about cleaning track. Locomotive body work, yes. This basically the uh, bodies are spray painted. Yeah, this is basically television suppression. <laughs> uh, blast from the past. I remember. I remember my old models interfering with TVs. It doesn't do it so much anymore. Yeah, spares, so spare parts and servicing. Yep. Okay. That's the instructions covered. Back to the model. Okay, it's, uh, it's the basic uh, polystyrene packaging from Hornby. Um, I need to remove some sellotape at the side. Oh, it's annoying. Like that. And it's got a little plastic window, which is handy. It keeps the model protective. Protected, I mean. Let's have a look at the accessories first. See what we get. Okay, uh, there's basically some vacuum pipe in there, which you can add later on. I haven't done that yet, even though I've had this model for a while. I need to do that. It's really simple, really. You just done. I like to get a knife so you can cut the spurs off, so you don't leave a bit of plastic hanging out. This just makes it nice and neat. But that's just me. Uh, let's get back to the model. Basically, it's like I said, basic packaging, finger through the hole jobby. So, if we just push finger through the hole, I usually try and get part of the metal. It's basic model, so it's not too bad. And out she pops. It's all protected with this uh, plastic cellophane at the bottom as well, so the bottom's protected. A bit of uh, polystyrene there. Get rid of that. Right. Yes, uh, what can I say? Um, just rather basic, but what would you expect from a railroad range? Just, some of them are quite detailed, if, if I would be nice. A little bit of hair there. Yeah, um, no sprung buffers, I'm afraid. These are the back to the plastic buffers which we're used to from the 70s and 80s if you remember them because <laughs> I certainly do um, a large tension lock which you can't really do anything about I mean you could cut it off you could go to surgery on the model and actually cut it off if you wanted to yeah the livery applications pretty good there's a handrail across and these white things here which I need to pick up some spares off. I need to get hold of some of them for the older model. Looks like some of the decorations missing out because of the 80s models decorated in some parts here. 
nice uh, wasp stripe on the back another huge tension lock molded detail this is molded lamps this is all basic yeah it's good metal die cast chassis there so that's all metal die cast O4 row wheel arrangement and you've got a nice uh, British Railways logo there yeah this is a really basic and impressive model uh, horn there yeah I quite like it to be honest I mean it is one thing about this model is it's so unrealistically fast <laughs> you put it on the track and you power it up and it goes whoosh, it's really fast there are things you can do to uh, to uh, slow it down there are things you put a decoder in it and you can fiddle about with the CV settings you could, you could do things like that there are a number of things you can do also there's another project I'm going to do is uh, basically these have got a short wheelbase some of these O4O's and especially on the express points Hornby express points they stall at going at really slow speed which is it's a shunter it's supposed to go slow you know but it stalls I have a way of solving that problem in the forms of a stay alive capacitor which you can fit to this model and it will keep the capacitor keep charged to so any dirt on the track or anything it will carry on going yeah I think we've even got some sandpipe detail there Let the camera pick it out yeah we have <laughs> yeah pretty good okay let's have a look at well Let's, let's put her on the track and see how well she performs. Okay, um, you join me back at the track side again. Um, let's just get the uh, loco in question. And we'll just place her on the track. There you are, just... Oh, I'm caught. Just as simple as that. There you are. It's only uh, four wheels and... Uh, and then we'll uh, send her off and see how well she performs. It's a very basic loco, but let's get to it. I'll put her into running, uh, running in speed. About 12 o'clock. Here she comes. Pretty basic locomotive. But as you can see, she runs pretty well. There she goes. Let's come back around the loop again. Couple of steel shots. Well, what can I say about her? She's uh, basic. She will uh, do the uh, the uh, starter. So if you're getting into the hobby for the first time, I do recommend her. Although she has a short wheelbase, so in a slow motion, as I was saying, in slow motion she can stall on points. Uh, also, she's not that good for shunting because she's got uh, the uh, gearing ratio is quite high. But for the beginner, She's good. There she goes, running about 12 o'clock. Revert back to 06 uh, slow mo speed.
I think that's as fast as I can get her going. She might die on the point. No, oh, she made it. Oh, okay. A good little run off for a, a beginner. Thank you for watching. unattended on the station. Luggage left unattended may be removed without warning or damaged or destroyed by the security services. The next train to arrive at platform one will be the 1249 service to Payton. Platform 2. Stand well clear of the platform edge, please.